to midnight Mountain Standard Time right here at KUHSDenver.com. Good afternoon and welcome to the KUHSDenver.com Artist Nook. It's 2 o'clock p.m. on Friday afternoon here in the suburbs of the Mile High City. Beautiful day out, absolutely gorgeous. God is so good. And he's blessing us with sunshine and with great company. And my name is Laura Paget. I'll be your hostess for the next half an hour or so until Uncle Henry kicks us out. And my guest is the gentleman who is on that advertisement, Mr. Stephen Ray Watts from the band Dot Zero. I'm so happy to welcome him here today to talk about his new project and, as always, to offer inspiration for artists all over the world and for those that support us. So, hi, Stephen Ray. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me in the studio today. I'm honored and delighted. Uh, I can't think of a better way to spend uh, Friday afternoon. Hey, good, because I feel the same way, and I've been going through a bunch of questions I have on this. But, you know, Stephen Ray and I have an, an interesting relationship. We're both kind of improv people. Wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah, We definitely. like to fly by the seat of our pants. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, in fact, I've, I've often thought if I ever did another website, I'd call it www.flybytheseatofmypants.com. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> I know, right? I, I know, right? But um, today, we've uh, decided to do this show yeah, to talk about... Stephen Ray's new project. And for those of you who don't know, he is a musician. He has a radio program here on KUHS every Sunday night uh, from 10 to midnight, talking about recovery, renewal, hope, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm honored to have him here today. And we're just going to jump in and I'm going to say, hey, let's talk about what you're up to now. Well, you know, it's one of those things, you know, I'm, I'm jumping in and doing recording a new CD. And a funny thing about being a, a musical artist is, you know, what when you're recording the CD, you're you're putting the songs together and you're putting your heart and soul into the music and and envisioning how it's going to end up and how it's going to be finished and what it how well it will do when it's done. So you're always kind of living in that future of you know I can't wait for this to be done. And you're you're projecting and and then you're not and then when it's done and it's out there and you're going oh no what am i doing what am i going to do now so it's like oh i'm not creating i'm not you know and that's a very uncomfortable feeling and until you get locked into the next thing that you're doing you feel kind of like whoa I'm, I'm i'm a fish out of water so i decided uh just i took one of our songs that we recorded years ago called Lighthouse in the Rockies. And I took it up to uh, our studio that we, that the studio that we work for with in Boulder. And I said, let's, let's rework this. Let's just see what happens. And we spent an afternoon and it was one of those uh, blessings that um, it's hard to put into words. Uh, it turned out completely new, fresh, and better than my highest expectations and to me that was the sign from from the lord you know it's time to get moving and i envisioned even though we this one is still an instrumental song what i did was is i used that as a springboard to launch into a contemporary christian music cd that i've always wanted to do uh incorporating uh, uh, messages and lyrics and your music uh, I have several of your CDs. I may have them all. I'm not sure, but I have several of them. And I know uh, the work that I've heard you do on Conscious Conversations as well as on your CDs. It's primarily uh, instrumental. Am I right? Yeah. It, it would be, con I would say, 90 to 95%. Yeah. And you cover very few other artists. I've, I've heard a few that you've covered. Uh, that meaning those are not original songs, but most of your work's original, am I right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've prided ourselves on, on being original uh, music. That's 
kind of what what our plan was from the beginning. And it and it's worked. I mean, it's a genre practically all of its own. Well, Dot Zero has a you. sound like no other. Bless Truly. you, Laura. That that means that's one of the that's the greatest compliment ever. You know, it's it's something that we we that's one of our goals is because we want our music to be defined by the music and not by a genre that we're forced into. And so it's kind of like being an actor. You don't want to be pigeonholed. You don't want to be typecast. You don't want to be told, okay, this is what you you know, are best at. And so therefore, this is what you do. It really stymies you. It's, it's, that's correct. And in this day and age, quite honestly, we got it, we have to be real. I mean, it's instrumental music is, is not in the mainstream. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't know that, but I'm glad you told me. And tell us now about the adventure to write lyrics on this new CD. Well, this is, something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I thought, well, this is going to be easy, <laughs> you know? And uh, wow, was I mistaken. I just, but I, I said to myself, this is something that happens when I have the opportunity to go speak at a recovery, uh, a group of, of recovery uh, of, of addiction people. You know, I, I used to think, well, I've got to prepare for this. I've got to prepare for this. And then when I do, I finally gave in to some, one of my guests told me one time, he said, speak from the heart, Steve, just tell your story, just tell from your heart and soul, you know, the way it is and, and trust that God is going to put into your heart, those words that need to come out. And so that's what I did with the lyrics. And uh, so far, uh, I feel like I've really uh, been able to capture uh, a sincerity with something that was really important to me with simplicity. Yeah. So simple, I, one of the things I reflect upon when you use the word simplicity is I reflect upon the way our Lord put the gospel down. You know, he came to everyone, but his message resonated with those less educated because it was from his heart, it was simple. And so I'm not at all putting down theology. I know there are brilliant, brilliant people out there who are doing theological work and I've read some of it, it's wonderful. But in the end, it is the simplicity of heart to heart, I believe, that he wanted us to get. I agree, and, and it's funny, it's, it's interesting. I think the, the kingdom of God is, is like that, you know, to accept the kingdom of, of God as a child. Um, you know, I would never grieve uh, my Lord or the Holy Spirit and, and, and you know, down myself as far as the, a creation that, that he has made. But I, I'll just simply say from a layman's point of view, I'm not the sharpest knife, knife in the drawer. Uh, I don't consider myself an intellect by any means. And I've seen in many realms, even in the realms of um, addiction recovery, there's so incredibly intelligent people that have a hard time uh, grasping on to a simple idea um, of faith, a simple idea of trust in something that you don't see. Faith is, uh, you know, it's Second Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. And I can do that as a person who doesn't consider myself the sharpest knife in the drawer. I simply accept because I know in my heart and in my soul. Wow. And I could do that because I'm a perpetual child. Yes, you yes, are. I am. My <laughs> shops for me at the Disney store. And that's why you're so, that's why everybody wants to be around you, Laura. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it's like, yeah, if we get in trouble, we'll blame it on the kid. <laughs> right? But my husband uh, shops for me at the Disney store. And uh People say, oh, how old is your number one? Well, you're 66. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, you know, but he's a good egg and a good sport, as y'all know. But I want to touch on something that you just said that I have learned in my own recovery. Uh, and I'm grabbing onto it with both hands and both feet right now. And that is to believe is different than to know. Absolutely. I can know about God. I can read about the miracles. I can hear from other folks a testimony of renewal, rejuvenation. I can give my testimony. 
but to go the longest distance in the world is from the mind to the heart. And to get that solidly placed in my heart to say, I believe you, Lord. I don't like this, or I don't like that, or I'm scared to do this. An example for me is this show. When Albert Quintana interviewed me, I thought, wow, that was really cool. When he came and said, interview me, I thought, wow, that's really crazy. Love you, Uncle Albert. But I got to tell you, I then he asked me to take the show as he did in LOA. Then I ended up taking the show, period. And I got to tell you, I was scared to death. There are some days I still am. What if I mess this up? What if I don't ask the right question? Whatever. But it is definitely a, uh, it's a faith. It's a trust. And when you began to do the work with lyrics, I want to ask, how did you know that's what you were supposed to do? Because that's a huge question for artists. How do I know this is the way I'm supposed to go? Well, I, sometimes the Lord's message to me is astoundingly clear. Okay. And astoundingly, uh, that it's the timing that I'm that I struggle with, mm -hmm. but I knew in my heart that this is something that was right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Especially when we did that remake of Lighthouse okay. uh, in the Rockies, that's that put it over the top for me. And then some of the the being still and, and listening for what the Lord is saying, you know, He says it in many different ways. And one of the things that He's He's telling me lately is is to not be um afraid of change okay. and i am afraid of change let's yeah. just put it that way um yeah. and so i i'm again this is this is the part of going out of comfort zone yeah and blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe and so that's i'm i'm stepping out with that and I, uh, it, to the point, Laura, that many of these songs on this CD that I'm doing, many of them aren't going to have any saxophone on them at all. Okay. This is my participation in this is from a writer's, from a lyricist, from a producer's, um, musical producer standpoint, and overall production. Uh, I tried to sing one of the songs. I, I, I put down a scratch track and I said, well, maybe the Lord will bless me with with letting me sing one of these songs. Yeah, we did a remake of Lost and Found. Mm -hmm. So I came up with those lyrics and I felt, okay, these are lyrics that are deep to my heart. So I'll go in and the studio, who knows, maybe it'll work. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> I found out quickly that I am a saxophone player and not a vocalist. Oh, well, so. that, that's great to know. I feel better now because that's what happened to me with the ballet. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're not going to, you know, I'm not graceful and uh, flowy like that. I'm a, I'm a rhythm dancer. I'm a stomper. I get to feel the earth under my feet and that beat in my body. But I, I have to say, I'm, I admire you for saying, well, maybe. Yeah. And then if it doesn't happen, well, okay. Well, you know what happened was, Laura, the, the, this is how the Lord works in mysterious ways. We all know this. And yet, so we have this. Uh, employee down at Jazz at Jacks has been working there for a little over a year, mm -hmm. and he's a he's a singer songwriter. And my wife Sandra says, "You got to hear this guy sing. He's really got a great voice." So I said, "Well, I don't have to hear him sing. I heard a few little things he did on karaoke night. I invited him up mm -hmm. to sing that song, and it has turned out absolutely beautiful. Oh, so man. it's an opportunity to give to a young person who's looking for an opportunity to to be on." recorded music and uh and the lord will put these things together in minute intricate ways and the timing of it will blow you away yeah it's always perfect yeah he's got the timing down i know i know i wonder does he have a rolex or a timex i'm just asking i don't know <laughs> but you know we've got a lot of folks tuning in from around the world folks and uncle henry who who loves me unconditionally realizes I can't see more than three feet in front of my face. So bless him. He just brought the screen up. And uh, golly, we have France. We have uh, the Russian Federation. We have Ireland. Uh, and Ireland, 
Tune in on the 3rd of March because Miss Molly Bennett's going to be here. She's a certified step dance teacher and she has a group here in Denver. We're going to talk about the phenomenon called Irish step dance. Uh, we have the United States, of course, because uh, we get a great pull from the U.S. And certainly we would today because Stephen is very well known. We have the U.K., we have Spain, Belgium, and we have, uh, oh my goodness, hello, Little Rock. I've got some kid in Arkansas, I love you, uh, Istanbul and Algeria, I mean, it's just running, yeah, I'm having a hard time catching all of them, Nigeria, and uh, we're just so blessed to have all of you here, thank you, international audience, because this particular station, KUHS, Denver.com, reaches the entire world. We're an internet access only. And the idea here is you can hear this anywhere you are. And we want the world, all the world, to hear what we're doing here, especially with the arts and the artists, bringing you the one thing I honestly believe in my heart will bring our world together, and that's the arts, because that's where we all connect up, the heart, the heart. So thank you so much for tuning in again. This is Laura Padgett. You're on the Artist Nook at KUHSDenver.com. My special guest is Mr. Stephen Ray Watts, my friend and a fellow Christian artist. He's a musician, and now he's become a lyric, a lyric writer. <laughs> he's laughing, but I'm telling you, I'm claiming it for you, brother. I'm claiming it for you. You're doing this. And so we've talked about the lyrics and how hard that was for you to step out in faith to do that. But what I wanted to ask you next is, how many songs have you gotten so far? Well, we're the the beautiful thing about that is we we've got we just recorded another version of Amazing Grace uh, oh. the other day, and I'm very excited about that. We're also uh, so so far we've got six songs that we that we're work we're working on, and I've got another um, bunch of them. I I don't think that. Uh, I've got a bunch of them already in my head. That's one of the reasons sure. I haven't got updated myself. Uh, my my smartphone is because I've got a bunch of them on voice memo. Oh, oh boy! <laughs> so, I know how that works. Anyway, it's it's funny uh, because one of the beautiful things about uh, you know surrendering into a get getting out of your comfort zone is I I have found in my life that I work best in collaboration. Okay. And so. I've, I've asked my son, Pastor Jesse Watts, mm -hmm. to to help me with, um, we've co-written a couple of these songs. He's helping me with lyrics. And then also um, a man named Kip Kipper, who's our producer up in at Coop Studios in, in Boulder. We collaborate on the musical in the, many of these things. And it's it's a writing combination that, that I cherish. Wow, I think that's wonderful. And as you've stepped out of your comfort zone, that I think there's a huge message there. For others, the younger or, the, you know, the middle aged or like me, the older people who are saying, yeah, I don't think I can do that. And one of the reasons I know I have said I can't do things in the past is, um, what if I fail? Oh, yeah. What if I fail? <laughs> are you kidding me? How could I fail? What does that say about me? Well, it depends on who you think is driving the bus, dude, because there is no failure in God. That's and and that's true. Nothing's gonna fail. It's it's one of those things where, yet it's it's part of your being and and I don't know if it ever gets easy, uh, to to jump out of your comfort zone. I think it becomes almost like a discipline where you could you can almost go and say, okay, because of past experiences that of, of jumping out of your comfort zone that have turned out good, then I can look at a percentage of, and and that's almost counter to what we're talking about with faith. So it's, it's I'll sit there and say, okay, well, it worked last time, so let's try it again. Okay. Instead of, okay. and then you add that to faith. Okay. It's, it's, that's important. Uh, and then sometimes it's just, you have to, you have to go against your natural born sense of intrepidation or fear or, again, like you say, what if I, yeah. yeah. And there is no failure. And I think knowing that God loves us so much that even if it doesn't work out for this song to be on the album or for this 
for you to sing it. Or um, recently I, I had the idea of writing a little fiction book for kids. I, I'm not a fiction writer, folks. I write nonfiction. But the idea is so much fun, and I've had so much support from people saying, yeah, I'll help you with that. Uh, so I've said, well, I'm always busy defining myself. So you're Stephen Ray Watt. You're Dot Zero. You're the saxophone man. You're Jazz at Jacks, right? So holding on to the personal definitions we've acquired. And how hard is that to let go of personal definitions so that we can be defined by the light that is within us? That's very well said. I mean, it's, it's, that is, that's the truth of it. You know, part of it is, is losing, is becoming, it, I, it, it always triggers for me something that I need to say or do. And one of the things that I need to constantly tell myself is, is um, you know, those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. And so the last part of that scripture is those who humble themselves will be, you leave the rest of that out and just say those who humble themselves and leave the rest alone. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that's what I have to do is and, and I, you know, I've said in interviews before, you know, to, to young people, don't get into, don't get into, especially like the entertainment industry. Oh boy. And no. if, if you, you, you have to define whether you love the art or the lifestyle and, or if you want to be with the, involved with the art, or if you want to be involved with the lifestyle. And you, if, if you're going to You've got to make a decision if you're going to compromise your morals and or your character. Hmm. Yeah. And as you walk into that decision, a fork in that road, um, have you had within yourself or outside yourself voices that have said, you can't do this? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, the, the thing about it is, is and, and I, I love this. This, this season of life because being 54 years old, you know, and having gone through, uh, you know, uh, being being whipped by addiction and 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 having to, to choose recovery and work that on a daily basis. And yeah, I'm at a point where, yeah, I'm I'm 54 years old and and man, if, if I only were 20 again, oh, and knowing I know. what I know now I know. and I do feel that and, you know, uh, but I do know one thing, and this is one of the, the problems that I, I face on a daily basis. And that is, you know, I could do, you could make the choice to do things differently, to get a little bit further, faster within an industry that you know how it works now. Yep. But I'm not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want to do that because I can see the end result. How would I feel about not only myself, but my, accomplish, my accomplishments if I did it that way, I see. rather than not getting there at all, which right. is just fine because at that point it's surrendering that to, to Jesus and to God that, you know, really it's his plan, not yeah. mine. Yeah. And in that you're confident and in that your confidence lies. 99.9% .9 of the time. And that last little percentage is my human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the ego, yes. which a friend of mine, and I'm sure you've heard this too, uh, used it as an acronym for edging God out. Absolutely. And, uh, we, you know, as artists, boy, I think it's really hard because I I don't know if you've ever suffered a writer's block or musician's block or it just isn't coming today. It just isn't flowing. It just isn't making sense. It doesn't want to, you know, and they say a writer's just sit down and write. Well, I don't do it that way. I, I've tried, and I honor the people who say that, and most of them are, you know, bestsellers. Good on them. Good, good. But for me, I may as well just put my fingers on the symbol keys and just type, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like in hearing what you're saying, I'm so much more encouraged to maybe have patience with the process. Oh, man, and that's not something I'm good at. I mean, it's something I will force myself to adhere to and say your your time lord but i am not good at that and I, and i i'm impatient and i and i uh, i want things i, I read a, 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 a i'm reading a book for a guest that's coming on to my show this good. weekend yeah. it's it's called into the father's arms and one of the things he's a pastor and he learned from one of his congregation 
ladies and said, uh, Pastor, I sense you have a striving uh, soul. Hmm. And she explained what that striving soul is. And I said, I raised my <coughs> hand, that's me. That's me. I cannot. I, I, I said, well, and I'll pray. So, Lord, if you didn't want me to be this way, then why did you make me this way? Why is it important for me to achieve or to to dream and to continue continue to create? And yet I'm learning that that is is part of me. But to accept that the results mm -hmm. of that are completely and totally up to him. Right. Wow, and that's a great lesson for me too. And I'm always so inspired when you're with me because I understand that we are um, siblings of the same father, but we are created in that creative mold. Mm -hmm. And that's a, you know, that's an interesting place. And I've often thought um, everybody is a creative individual. I, I teach that when I teach writing classes or dance classes. People, oh, I don't have any creativity in me. I'm like, that's like saying you have no blood. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are created in the image of the great creator. But to submit to co-creation, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. And uh, to let go of the fact that I, I'm not failing at this. If it doesn't go, God said no. So there you are. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, and you look at them and go, well, I'd really like to know what that is. And that's where I very first learned, uh, no is a complete sentence, daughter. You don't mm -hmm. get to know why. You don't need to know why. Wow. Don't worry about that. I yeah. got it. Yeah. I got it. When do you think, oh, no, go ahead. You're well, going to say something. The, one of the things that, I, that helped me come to grips with it yeah. is I look at my art and I look at the, the wonderful gifts of faith that God has given me accomplishments and and uh, things that I can be uh, that I can hang my hat on so to speak mm -hmm. uh, but I also know that in God's world in God's creation that there are literally thousands of unbelievably gifted musicians artists writers that mm -hmm. are in God's creations even in this world of mass communication that we probably will never be in the household word or in the mainstream no. of people's consciousness, but God knows what they can do. That's right. And that art, so we'll know someday and we'll know the, the whole meaning of it all. Until then, it, it, to me, it's a, it's, a big, it's a big surrender, but to, to strive healthily. Oh, what a great saying. And what does that mean to you? That means to fulfill and use to the best of your abilities the gifts that God has given you. And remember that that he's blessed everybody in a different way. But to give your gifts everything you've got. And also remember that part of that is just being completely comfortable with the you that God made. And in the end, we only dance for an audience of one. That's true. That's right. Yes. Well, I've got to ask you, any idea when this is coming out for our listeners? Well, if it were up to me, <laughs> I, if it were up to me, I would love to have it ready and, and um, ready to go out this summer. Uh -huh. uh, most likely that's not going to happen. And you're fine with um, that, right? Well, and you know, part of me and that I started thinking, I'm going, well, well, it's, it's just the day and age of releasing singles again. So why not finish up one of the songs and get it out there and get it and get the ball rolling oh. and get get some uh, you know some excitement building? That's a possibility. Something in in the back of my mind is saying you know don't rush it. Just Good. just let it let it go. Good. So we'll, I I wish I had. It's up to the Lord. I, I truly because if it were up to me, I would I would try to. Get it done for summer. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I would have been remiss had I not asked because, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of chomping at the bit because your music, as I've told you, is what goes on my uh, uh, player when I'm writing. And definitely, I dance to it, you know, fairly regularly at home. And uh, just, it's a real praise. It's just a, a way to praise God for me. And I want to know if you would share with us where people can connect with you seeing you live as well as getting your albums well the best way to uh get our albums that are either on uh, our website which is uh dot mm -hmm. and they ship 
same day. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that because I do the shipping. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, many uh, talents. and so, uh, and then, or you can get, they, they're all available uh, through Amazon as well. Great. And uh, I, we were playing a lot at our own place, uh, Jazz at Jack's, during this time of the, uh, the year. Uh, we'll be there this weekend, uh, the 17th and 18th of February, and um, we'll be there sporadically throughout the, uh, the rest of the winter. Yet, as you know, the winter in, in Colorado is now March and April. Um, yeah. So, but uh, we'll be at, you can find out our, our concert schedule through uh, the website as well. Okay. Folks, that's Stephen Ray Watts with the band Dot Zero. But it's Stephen Ray Watts, the man, and the child of God, and the inspired and the inspiring gentleman who has uh, been my guest. I think this is either the second or third time, and I certainly hope you'll come back another time because we have so much fun here. We certainly do. We I, I, <laughs> the pleasure's all mine, Laura. Oh, you know that. Thank you. And I want to tell you all again, that we are going to be having on the 3rd of March, my buddy, my friend, Miss Molly Bennett. She has Bennett School of Irish Dance here in Denver. Now I've danced with Miss Molly. I've danced against Miss Molly's teams. Uh, we've been in, I've never done a show with her, but I certainly have done Kaylee Club with her. We're gonna explain to you what that means. And uh, she has taught me something that Stephen talked about today. And that is the love of the art. Because Molly and I are both in our 60s, and, um, but, you know, Molly's been dancing a long time. She's uh, certified. She's a judge. She's, she's quite, quite the individual when it comes to this art. And she and I have had so many conversations about what does it mean to love this art to the point when that fiddle comes on, when that, when you hear those pipes, you are out of your chair. And, and that certainly is the way I am. And you can ask my husband who has had to replace wooden floors all over the house. But I just want to invite you to be with us. That'll be KUHSDenver.com. Artist Nook, 2 p.m. March the 3rd. We're talking about St. Patrick's Day, of course. And we're talking about my heart because Irish dance is what got me going in the dance world. It's my history. As a Celt, it is my heart, and I understand it. And the stories behind this and the history behind this, just really, really important. Until then, go out and enjoy this great day in Colorado from Laura Paget and my good buddy. Stephen Watts. Right. <laughs> and don't forget to tune into Stephen's show. Sunday nights, 10 to midnight, Conscious Conversation. He's already given you a wee bit of a teaser about what uh, to expect in terms of his guests this week. But this song is one of my favorites. He, he uh, has this on his album, Telltale. That's correct. And it's called... Stepping Out of the Boat. Oh, yeah. All right. Go have a blessed weekend. Step out of the boat. Get out of your comfort zone. You can't fail. You only fail when you sit in your chair. Love you. Bye-bye. Nice job. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Thank you for having me.